Radioactive iodine therapy after thyroid cancer treatment is correlated increased risk of other second primary malignancies. It means cancer treatment causes another cancer. This risk is not too high but realistic. Two multicenter studies, one from Europe and the other from North America, were included in this review. One group was treated with radioiodine, another group without radioiodine. Latency period of 2 to 3 years after thyroid cancer diagnosis. There was increased risk of following cancers among who treated with radioiodine. Leukemia, may be slightly increased risk of, bladder, breast, central nervous system, colon and rectum, digestive tract, stomach, pancreas, kidney, and renal pelvis, lung, or melanoma of skin. Cancers. But not important. According another study, patients with radioiodine therapy had an increased early risk of developing acute myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia but no other hematologic malignancies. Acute myeloblastic leukemia that arises after radioiodine treatment has a poor prognosis. Radioiodine should be monitored for myeloid malignancies as part of cancer surveillance. Study from People 52-103 was observed after radioiodine treatment 1973 to 2008 years. And 4,457 individuals developed second cancers. It's 8% of the population. Most commonly elevated second cancers were the salivary gland and kidney. Additionally, the increase in second cancers in patients with recently diagnosed thyroid microcarcinomas, less than tenum, suggests that aggressive radiation treatment of the first primary thyroid cancer, the environment, and genetic susceptibility, may increase the risk of second cancer. After radioiodine therapy, according to another study, there is increased risk development of following malignancies. Salivary gland cancer, bone and joints cancer, acute lymphocytic leukemia, ureter cancer. Interestingly, thyroid cancer survivors had a decreased risk of the development of colorectal cancer compared to reference population. Another study, a total of 1,571 patients, 40%, received radioiodine. 26 SPMs were observed, and 18.3 were expected. Patients treated with radioiodine were at dramatically elevated risk for development of a salivary malignancy. The risk of leukemia in radioiodine-treated patients was elevated, but not too much. Approximately 1 in 227 radioiodine-treated patients will develop an SPM. It is critical to weigh the benefits of radioiodine carefully against the small, but real, increase in SPM risk. After radioiodine therapy a statistically significantly higher secondary malignancy was observed in leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, 2.38, prostate, 2.30, lung and mediastinum, 1.93, pancreas, 1.83, kidney, 1.81, breast, 1.48, and colon rectum, 1.31 cancers. A cumulative radioiodine dose greater than 150 mc possessed a statistically significant risk for all cancer combined, R equals 1.30, and leukemia, R equals 6.03.